Chairman Skelton actually circulated your commencement address at Annapolis to all the members of the Armed Services Committee. And I just want to say, as somebody who read that, it was one of the healthiest statements about the role of military in a constitutional democracy. And I think it should be required reading, not just for people in academies, but frankly, high school students. It was terrific. In the spirit of that, I just want to follow up on the last colloquy with the Chairman on this issue of us, Congress, in this effort to negotiate with the Iraqi government. When President Bush signed his statement back in November with President Maliki, I mean, it stated, quote, that the U.S. would provide security assurances and commitments to the Republic of Iraq and support Iraq in defending its internal and external threats. Now, that's more than a status of forces agreement, I mean, which obviously covers the legal status of our troops there. I mean, that's actually a security agreement. And I just want to be clear in my own mind what you're telling us as to the administration's intent. I mean, is it your intent to enter into a security arrangement with the government of Iraq? No, the status of forces agreement will not have a security component to it. It will not be a security agreement with the Iraqis. It will be like virtually all, well, like most status of forces agreements, basically the rules of the road and an agreement on how we are able to operate in Iraq once the U.N. Security Council resolution authorizing that activity is concluded or runs out. And so it's about what kind of, well, a question would be, will we still have the authority to detain people? Another one would be, what is going to be the role of, what kind of immunities do contractors have? So those are the kinds of issues that are going to be addressed in this status of forces agreement. And as I've said earlier, because of the special nature of this agreement, only because of the sensitivity of the issue here in Washington or in the country, I believe that the government's approach to negotiating this with the Iraqis should be a very open one with the Congress in terms of what's in the agreement, what we're asking for, and so on. Well, that's certainly consistent with the Gates principles of your address. But it also sounds different, what you just said, in terms of today's statement versus what was signed back in November. And I'm told that the declaration of principles that was signed in November was not considered by our government to be a security commitment. And that will be reassuring, I think, to many people who are worried about tying the hands of a future administration. I will tell you, and I would continue to say we do not seek and do not want bases, permanent bases in Iraq. And I think that nothing that I have seen in sort of the broad outlines of what we are trying to work out with the Iraqis would commit a next administration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 Thank